It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a can of Northern Monks Double IPA. But this isn't any old Double IPA. This is a fruit concentrate Double IPA. This has real fruits in it. Mango, pineapple and passion fruit juice Double IPA. It's 8% ABV. It's called Forbidden Fruits. It's by Northern Monk Brewing Company. It's part of their twist edition. It's a 440 milliliter can cost me £3.50. It was in the fridge, which is really cool, in Morrison's. If you go to Morrison's, hit their beer fridges, you will see this in the fridge. It's brand new into Morrison's. Uh, but what's interesting is there was another beer that was in the fridge as well, uh, another beer from Northern Monk, and this is Faith in Tropics. It was a hazy pale ale at 5.4% ABV. But what's interesting is if you look at the front of this can, it has mango, pineapple and passion fruit juice on the front. And on the back of this can, just so they can give you a point of difference, because you're not thinking you're buying the same thing. So it's on the back of the can, it has the same writing, uh, real mango, pineapple and passion fruit juice. So they basically bought a massive, giant container tub of, of concentrated fruit juices, and they mixed the fruit juices to make uh, a pale ale, and a double IPA. Totally understand it. Um, it's probably cost efficient for Northern Monk to buy one giant container full of fruit concentrates rather than trying to do things a little bit differently. Um, the, the only difference I think this is gonna be is this is 5.4% ABV, this is 8% ABV. So not to get confused then, let's get this 8% ABV double IPA with real fruit concentrate, real fruit juice into the glass and see what we get. Let's get it open. A little bit of smoke on the can opening. Beer in the glass. So they called it a milkshake twist on the pale ale and on the back of this can they called it, they've added lactose. So again, that's a very, very similar thing. I mean, if you're calling yourself a, a milkshake pale ale, it's gonna be lactose. Um, on the back of here, they've actually put lactose. So it's a play on words. It's, it's essentially exactly the same thing, but this is higher in ABV. Now, my question to you guys, as I'm pouring this beer out, does it look like a double IPA? Does it look like any kind of IPA? Um, the word IPA is India Pale Ale. They, they were brewed um, as, as beers that were very hop forward um, to be able to be shipped to India. And the amount of hops that they added, more hops, and they made the beer stronger, uh, was, was to make the beer travel, to make the beer travel further, just to get it to India. So that is essentially what, a, what an IPA is. A double IPA is a double India Pale Ale, where it's 8% ABV, it's quite very strong, and it, should have a lot of hops and it should be quite strong being a double IPA. This, I don't know, there's no real word of hops here on the back of this can. Um, again, the language, the language that these breweries are using for beer these days is very confusing. It's very confusing for uh, the normal man on the street. But I'm gonna try and break it down for you. I'm gonna try and make this as simple as possible for you. Uh, we got a one finger white head. It's very tropical looking, um, definitely fruit juice looking, uh, slow moving carbonation, uh, thick amber, fruit juicy color, uh, very hazy, let's get the aroma. It smells like a Solero. It smells like a Solero ice cream. Is that a bad thing? On this wonderful hot July morning? Absolutely not. No, it's quite actually, you know, you get your nose into this and you think this is lovely and refreshing. I mean, the Spain, Portugal, France, Italy, and you know, the normal thing you do in these countries 
on a hot day is pour yourself a nice glass of fruit juice. But beer? I don't know. Let's dive in. Try, the aroma is just tropical fruit juice. Let's dive in. Cheers, it's actually got a little bit of a mentally kind of minty aroma as well. Which is a bit weird. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Remember Del Boy? Anybody remember Del Boy when he used to go into the pub and everybody would be drinking pints and he'd be there with his like little umbrella. He'd have this extravagant bowl of alcoholic liquid. He would have a straw coming out of it. He would have one of those little paper umbrellas. Um, there might be some other stuff going on. Um, There might be a pink elephant coming on the side of it, or you know, it was really extravagant. Delboy was extravagant, wasn't he? Um, but you know, everybody would kind of give him that look, like you know, oh, there he is, you know, here he is, the guy that's got to be different, the guy that you know, the guy that wants to um, drink <laughs> drink this thing with a sparkler going off in it, and and his umbrellas, and you know, he was confident enough to do it. It was part of his character. We all loved Delboy, um, but, but this this strikes me as a bit of a Del Boy beer, to be honest, this is just, just <sighs> I've got to calm down. I've got I've got to calm down because um, my blood pressure will go through the roof, and and nobody wants to see that today. Big red faced man shouting at the camera. It tastes like blooming. It tastes minty. It tastes if you're drinking along with this, if you're drinking this beer with me now, comment in the comments box. Has it got a certain kind of weird mintiness to it? Spearmint. Or well, garden. You know, we, we, I, I used to go to my grandfather's garden and pick some mint out and, and, and crush it and smell it. It was beautiful. It's got that same kind of weird mintiness to it. Really weird. Concentrated fruit juice then. Um, passion fruit, mango, whatever else they said there was in your passion fruit, mango, and um, pineapple. Um, if you watch the Pale Ale review, um, you heard me talking about. Um, um, I want to start off by, by being fair. I really want to start off by, by being fair. I totally understand what the brewery is trying to do. I totally understand where they are. I totally understand what, what, what they're trying to do. Um, as a refreshing alcoholic liquid goes, if this was blindly handed to me, I would say this is the best vodka fruit juice that I've ever tasted in my life. This is terrific. You've got a real kick of the alcohol. you got lots of the fruit concentrates. I say, brilliant. This is the best cocktail anybody's ever handed me. This is this is terrific. Um, but I don't want to drink cocktail. This is the point. It's a terrific, terrific alcoholic drink. This is a terrific, terrific alcoholic drink. But beer, calling this beer, calling this a double IPA, it's too far of a stretch. It's too far of a stretch. Um, it's way too far of a stretch, actually. I said it in the Pale Ale review, the previous review here. Same fruits, one there. So mango, pineapple, and passion fruit. Just to just to clarify, um, I picked the wrong can up just now. But it's the same. It's the same concentrate, so it, it, it doesn't really kind of matter. I said it in the Pale Ale review. If I want to do this, I could do this cheaper, far cheaper, by going and buying myself a carton of Don Simon, 
mix fruit concentrate juice in a carton, one litre carton. Gonna buy myself a cheap bottle of vodka. And I'm pretty sure, in fact, I'm certain, I'm certain that you could make yourself an alcoholic smoothie of this nature. And it would taste exactly the same as this beer for £3.50 for the can. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I think breweries have realised that they can try and leave hops out altogether. They can, they, hops are very expensive. Hop fields in the UK are still establishing themselves. They're still establishing themselves all over America and Europe. There's a massive demand for hops. There's a massive demand for beer. The problem is hops take five years to really get into their stride where you're actually making a profit from the hops. So if a farmer planted hops this year, 2022, they wouldn't make a profit until 2028. So five years time. And we're all going through that kind of everybody wants hops. Hops are expensive. What can we do? Um, well, the answer is not to put fruit concentrate in your beer, fruit juice in your beer. This is not the answer. This is not the answer to beer's problem. Because for me, this is, this is just not beer. This is just not beer. Uh, the, the, the answer is probably to... Uh, but again, within, within this whole kind of almost like a credit crunch, aren't we, 2022, the cost of living crisis we're going through at the moment, um, which we're all feeling, we're all feeling, and everybody's scrambling around for trying to make a profit and, and keeping their companies above water. There's been a few brewery bankruptcies in 2022, which is really unfortunate, and there seems to be more down the pipeline. But to swerve this whole hop problem by just using, or well, there might be some hops in the beer, I'm not doubting that, but by using fruit concentrates and calling it a double IPA, I, 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 I just think that the, the, these breweries are, are earning a, fast, a bit of a fast buck here. They, they're just... And it's, it's difficult to say this because of the situation we're all in. We're all trying to, you know, earn some money in the world. It's difficult to say this, but it seems to be a bit of a fast buck. It seems to be, let's grab some money while we can. And, and this seems like a massive shortcut. This seems like a massive shortcut to beer's problems. Um, I didn't get into craft beer to drink alcoholic fruit juice that I could make myself from a cat of Don Simon and a small bottle of vodka. I didn't get into beer for that. Um, I've tried brewing beer myself. Um, it's extremely difficult, don't get me wrong. I can't do it, I can't home brew. I'm rubbish at it. So I can't brew beer, but on the other hand, I could make this really quickly, really, really quickly. And it's a shame, it's, it's a real shame because it can be done a lot cheaper. Um, This is actually worse. This is actually worse tasting than the pale ale. The pale ale actually tastes a little, a little bit better. This has got a weird mintiness to it. That Maybe the fruit concentrates just didn't get on with the ABV, that 8% ABV. Maybe it's just clashed in the glass a little bit, but it's minty. It's horrible and minty. Ah... Uh. Again, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to give this two reviews, two ratings. My first rating is on a nice sunny morning. I've got a glass of concentrated fruit juice there with alcohol in it. Yeah, it tastes okay, actually. If somebody handed that in a blind taste test, it'd be all right. It'd be all right. Bit minty, but okay. Seven out of ten. Somebody hands me this and calls it a beer, a double IPA, 
I'm gonna laugh at you. I'm gonna laugh so hard at your face and tell you it's so far away from being a double IPA that it's bordering absurd. It's bordering insulting. It's bordering, I'm just gonna look at the, the bottles of Banks Bitter from now on and I'm gonna look at the bottles of Adnams Old Ale and I'm gonna drink something far more traditional if I have to. Because it's a lot, it's an awful lot better than, you know, if I wanna taste beer, I'll buy beer. If I wanna make myself an alcoholic fruit juice, I'll make my own alcoholic fruit juice. So for me, it's really poor, it's really poor, it's two out of 10. Two out of 10 for, for, for trying to be a beer. Hope you liked the video. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom, cheers.